for the week November uh, 17 to the 26th, uh, we have these uh, news and uh, interesting human uh, features. Uh, first, uh, since we've been reporting the year and a half past about the Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa partnership, the BRICS uh, uh, alliance or partnership, uh, let's start with this development from BRICS. Uh, the BRICS New Development Bank approves two new loans. Uh, this comes from the BRICS post uh, November 21st. The BRICS New Development Bank uh, has approved two loans for a water infrastructure project in India and the other is for a transport infrastructure in uh, Russia. The boards of directors of the NDB approved two infrastructure projects with a loan value of $413.8 uh, million dollars during the 12th uh, Board of Directors meeting in Shanghai on November 20. The NDB was established to mobilize resources for infrastructure and sustainable development in BRICS and other emerging economies and developing countries. And the two projects approved today are fully in line with the BRICS mandate and national development plans of our member countries, said Mr. Uh, K.V. Kamath, the NDB president, who is Indian. The larger loan of $345 million will be lent to the government of the Republic of India, which will forward it to the government of Rajasthan for rehabilitating the Indira Gandhi Canal system. The smaller loan of $68.8 million will be lent to the government of the Russian Federation, which will use it for the construction of a tall transport corridor connecting the Ufa city center to the M5 Federal Highway. The Russian economy expanded 1.8% year-on-year, in the third quarter after a near five-year high of 2.5% year-on-year gain in the second quarter. While the NDB gave the go-ahead for loans to seven projects reaching $1.5 billion in 2016, the amount of approved loans is expected to reach $2.5 billion in 2017. We want to fund projects that are creative and bring benefits to the local people and environment, said NDB Vice President Zhu Xian uh, said, uh, well, but anyway, um, uh, this is a report from Helmo Prius of Cape Town, South Africa, for the BRICS Post. Okay, next, Iran, Russia, Turkey to call for international conference on Syria. And uh, okay, let's, this is the, the, the news item. The presidents of Iran, Russia, and Turkey have concluded a tripartite summit on Syria in Sochi and said there is real chance for peace now that the Islamic State has been largely defeated. With the IS forces routed in Syria and in Iraq, a cessation of hostilities in full effect, uh, and hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees returning home, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that there is a real chance of a political settlement that will end the seven-year civil war. The three leaders meeting in Sochi said the momentum was such that they would sponsor an international conference involving all conflicting parties to bring the war to an end. But Putin warned that the reforms would not be easy and would require, quote, compromise and concessions, unquote, from all parties to the conflict. In previous years, Saudi Arabia, which had backed the mostly militant Islamist rebel factions against Assad, had ruled out a future role for the Syrian president. But after a number of meetings between Putin and the Saudi leaders, they appear to have backed away from that demand. The U.S. also to, seems to have softened its anti-Assad position in the post-conflict period. Big bricks post and uh, inputs from agencies. And now, uh, which will be our subject also later on in our uh, China-Philippines focus, uh, is dialogue with Myanmar, not censure, needed on Rohingya, Rohingya crisis from the Manila Times. Uh, stripped of the emotionalism fanned by international lobby groups, Manila's vote, as explained by Malacanang and Foreign Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano, was the reasonable position for a number of reasons. The UN proposal was an European-drafted uh, proposal uh, and the Organization of Islamic State-sponsored draft, uh, naturally supported by the Muslim-majority ASEAN countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. The Philippines is in a different position, being the ASEAN chairman this year, and charged with keeping the balance in the 10-nation regional bloc. It cannot simply turn its back on Myanmar and its state councillor, Aung San Suu Kyi, whom it graciously hosted and welcomed to the 31st ASEAN summit early this month. The UN General Assembly's stance is not the ASEAN way. 
uh, Seon should know, having interacted with the junta and uh, playing a key role in encouraging Myanmar's democratic reforms that began in 2011. ASEAN's experience showed uh, that uh, gradual, gradualism works best in dealing with Myanmar, not threats of wholesale sanctions and ostracism. Cayetana pointed out on Monday that making huge demands on Myanmar, such as full citizenship to all Rohingyas without a reasonable vetting process, could harden Myanmar's military faction. Myanmar considers the call for full citizenship rights an insult to its sovereignty. It calls the Rohingyas Bengalis, or immigrants from Bangladesh. Forcing the issue could hinder the entry of humanitarian aid to the Rohingyas in the northern Rakhine state. China has presented a three-phase plan to resolve the Rohingya crisis involving a ceasefire declaration, talks between Myanmar and Bangladesh, which has been signed just a day ago, and poverty alleviation. Okay, now uh, let's move on to the United States. Uh, the United States is defending its use of the term Indo-Pacific over the Asia-Pacific and says it reflects India's rise. The Trump administration has defended its use of the phrase Indo-Pacific instead of Asia-Pacific, saying it captures the importance of India's rise. The phrase captures, quote, captures the importance of the maritime free commons that allow our security and our prosperity to continue, unquote. A senior administration, U.S. administration official told reporters during a media briefing last November 5, after questions were raised on the increasing use of the phrase, quote, Indo-Pacific, unquote, by the Trump administration, and whether it is a strategy to contain the rise of China. Quoting again, containment, certainly not, unquote, the official said, saying that the United States is an Indo-Pacific power and dependent on the U.S. maintaining access for free flow of commerce to this region because it is a Pacific nation. The official stressed that this is a region that includes China, Japan, the Korean Peninsula, and Northeast Asia. It also includes Oceania, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands, and the U.S. long-standing uh, ally, uh, Australia, in the south. India to the west, uh, they say, the United States to the east, the official said. But my comment here is this. The word Asia originated from the ancient Greek word Aoya, first attributed to Herodotus about uh, 440 BCE in reference to Anatolia or to the Persian Empire, in contrast to Greece and Egypt. It originally was just a name for the east bank of the Aegean Sea, an unknown uh, and an, an area unknown to the Hittites as Asua. Uh, we quote this from uh, uh, the internet, from Wikipedia. And then let, let me just add this. But India is not connected directly to the Pacific. And the list of continent, uh, well, that uh, we quoted from the uh, list of continents and so on. Uh, so India is not um, uh, connected to the Pacific uh, directly. Uh, and the term Asia is a Western uh, uh, creation to identify everything East. Uh, and that includes, even today, uh, that includes uh, all these countries, Korea, Japan, and so on. Uh, uh, the Indo-Chinese uh, Peninsula, uh, meaning Vietnam, Myanmar, etc., and so on. To use Indo-Pacific is to try to put aside Asia when this is really the rising Asian century. So what is this attempt by Mr. Trump and the uh, U.S. State Department uh, to try to uh, rename this region? I think uh, personally I felt it uh, slight on uh, our region. Uh, and this will not change. This will be the Asia-Pacific region. Let's move on. And uh, we have two very interesting videos. Trump's granddaughter has a rival who speaks Mandarin like a Chinese news anchor. And uh, let's go on. Uh, uh, as we all know by now, U.S. President Donald Trump proudly showed off a video of his granddaughter, Arabella, which we will show a little later, singing in Mandarin and reciting classical Chinese poetry during his first official visit to China. But recently, the daughter of another American businessman has been giving Trump's talented granddaughter a real run for her money. The Mandarin-speaking girl who has stolen the spotlight of, of, the, uh, lay, of late is a blonde-haired girl nicknamed Happy, the daughter of world-renowned investor Jim Rogers. In fact, her Chinese is so good that many people have trouble believing their ears. Let's go to the first video of the daughter, uh, granddaughter of... Um, uh, 
President Trump. Uh, are you ready with that? Okay, so that's the granddaughter of uh, President Trump uh, singing very, very good uh, Mandarin, uh, Mandarin song. But uh, next video is the daughter of Jim Rogers, Happy. And she is fantastic. I wouldn't even dare to start a conversation in Mandarin with her. I will have to practice a year uh, because she was born in China and um, she speaks as a native Mandarin speaker. Let's uh, watch. Uh, happy and her father. Ni hao. Hi everyone. I am Happy Rogers and I'm back. Today I am going to be asking my father, Mr. Jim Rogers, a few questions. Da jia hao. Wo de ming zi shi huai le luo jie si. Jin tian wo yao wen wo de ba ba jie mu luo jie si yi xie wen ti. Wo hui xian yong hua wen wen. 然后他会用英文回答。第一个问题，爸爸，你在你写的书里和电视上说你本来是不喜欢孩子的，那现在你有了两个孩子，这是怎么发生的？I never wanted to have children ever. When my your mother and I came back from around the world, and your mother said, "Well, why don't we have a child?" And I said, "Well, if I'm ever going to do it." Why not try and see what it's all about? And out you came. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, and your little sister came along too, and it's been wonderful. I was wrong about not having children. 爸爸说，他本来是不要孩子的，但是当他从环游世界回来的时候，我的妈妈说，杰姆，为什么我们不要生个宝宝呢？爸爸说，嗯，对，我们试试吧。Well, uh, Jim Rogers advises uh, all Americans uh, to teach their children Mandarin because he really said that uh, Mandarin will be the language of the future. Well, uh, I have to tell you, uh, in order to speak like the daughter Happy, of Jim Rogers, I would have to spend six months to a year again studying my, reviewing my Mandarin. So anyway, with that, uh, you've uh, heard the news and views uh, for this week of uh, November uh, 17, 18 to the 26th. Okay, we'll now focus on the Rohingya issue in our uh, Philippine-China focus, where the Philippines and China has taken, uh, have taken the same position on the Rohingya issue and proposed constructive measures to resolve uh, the problem uh, in the region. Okay, let's take this break.